Happy Earth Day, everyone. Today is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. That's amazing, 50 years. And every Earth Day has a theme. A lot of people don't know that. Does anybody know the theme of this Earth Day, this 50th anniversary Earth Day? What's our theme today? Happy Earth Day. The theme for today's Earth Day is climate action. Yay, happy Earth climate action. That is today's theme. Uh, Earth Day was originally started by a Wisconsin senator back in 1970 uh, named Gaylord Nelson. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> and it, it created a bunch of legislature. A lot of uh, ecologist actions started working with the White House. And it was really a big movement to start uh, understanding the delicate balance with the earth. So today is a wonderful, wonderful um, day to be having this call and share the resources and the connection to our earth. I'm really excited. Thank you for joining us all. We are, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. We have, um, this is our weekly class. We like to share with everyone, um, try and get people together in this social distancing time. And it's really exciting to, um, for today's topic, uh, because we have the amazing Carly Bergman to, uh, joining us, which is fantastic. So excited. Um, she is a uh, the co-creator of the Sustainable Duo um, and is really um, active in uh, uh, announcing and advocating for Earth regenerative practices. I wanted to ask everybody a question today, and that is, what are you doing in your home to reduce your waste? Oh, here we go. All right. Um, yeah, I'm starting here in a flat uh, with um, using my uh, jars. Yeah, you know. Yes. Hi, you know. And I'm calling <laughs> Belgium, by the way. Belgium, wonderful. I was looking for permaculture places, and I found your place. I think through a documentary. And then I saw you offer a free line of online course. And I was like, let me join. And I'm reading this one right now. It's in Dutch. But it's about oh. and personal social life. Um, and I'm, I lived on a permaculture farm two years ago. Um, I'm still quite new in the movement. Um, and at my flat, I'm like reusing my uh, glass jars as containers instead of plastic um, and I'm going to live in a tiny house within nine months uh, nine weeks sorry nine months nine weeks nine weeks Ooh, what an exciting adventure for you thank you so much for joining us more simply and uh, yeah wonderful wonderful I saw uh, Ari you wanted to speak you're still muted can you hear me yes Wonderful. Um, I have been actively composting and um, vermiposting uh, with worms uh, or vermiculturing. And then uh, in order to just get the, just the amount that was like coffee grounds. I had a lot of coffee grounds leaving my house. Eggs, I have chicken, so I had a lot of eggshells. And then I just got bananas. So I've been making fertilizer out of the eggshells, banana peels, and coffee grounds um, to try to bring some life into my sandy soil. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. That's pretty crucial for growing any food here in Florida just because of our poor soil quality. And a lot of people don't know, but just simply by recycling and composting, you can reduce 50% of your waste into the landfills. That's such a high number and it's uh i thoroughly enjoy composting it's part becomes part of my life so it's really exciting that you're you're doing that so thank you that's that's wonderful anyone else have uh, something they'd like to share with the group oh here we go we got anson anson oates hey good good morning uh one of the things we did um which was kind of a big switch for us is uh we switched to a bidet uh, during this crisis. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, we have a septic system and, and our drain field goes into our butterfly garden, which is obviously going to help a lot. Um, our goal here is to create a sustainable environment uh, 
um, in a suburban uh, environment. Um, and so that was one thing we just didn't want to um, uh, get caught up in the toilet paper pandemic. Um, <laughs> so that's one thing we've done recently and, um, and it's all working really great. That is so wonderful. And it's such a test of regenerative uh, renewable lifestyles because uh, we grow our toilet paper plants that we use for toilet paper and we're just getting more and more toilet paper every day. So we haven't had any shortage in our composting toilets. And it's, um, it's exciting when we turn that need into a beautiful part of our lives. So bidet, I've been wanting to look into those. I've honestly, uh, I don't know much about them. So but I'll, I'll take, I'm going to put that one on the list. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, anyone else before we get started? Like, yeah. uh, hi. Uh, we also compost every day. Um, our little compost is a small tumbler that we can roll. Um, so it does take a bit longer to create the compost, but it's absolutely um, amazing for that Florida soil. <laughs> uh, we also um, have an incinerator toilet. Ooh. Yeah. So that is, um, we have a liner that we insert in and then we do our business and then we flush it into a different compartment and we turn it on and it incinerates it into ashes. So it just completely reduces it to nothing. <laughs> and then we change it out every three days about, give or take how much uh, we use it. Uh, yeah, and then we recycle, of course, as well. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, it's, um, I, the first thing I tell people when they're trying to grow food here in Florida is it's pretty much like growing on the beach. It's, uh, it's we're pure sand here. So if you're not composting, I, I can't imagine you're growing organically too well. So um, fantastic. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, our theme for today is zero waste. Um, and it's, I'm really excited about it. Uh, the exciting part about re uh, zero waste is the whole regenerative aspect. Um, we have a bio digester in our eco village. So every day we get another hour of cooking fuel. So just by off the food scraps that we feed it, gives us an hour every day of cooking. So it's really amazing to have those systems that every day just recharge themselves on food scraps that we would have either just composted or um, many people would throw into a landfill. We're turning that into a beautiful energy source. Um, so that regenerative lifestyle is really important. Um, and it starts by just looking into your trash bin, go into your garbage can and look what's in there and find a way that you can decrease it, and then of course, find a use for it. Um, for me right now, it's those little plastic bags. Everything seems to be sent in little plastic bags and I'm really trying to find a way to either find a use for them, and of course we wash them out, reuse them, but what can we do to not get them in the first place? So it's, um, that's a big challenge for me. And that really comes down to just making our own stuff and we're making our own deodorants. We're trying to make our own food products so we don't have to go get those plastic bags. So it's really exciting to enter into this world. And that's just a few things that we're doing here. Uh, once the world opens back up, we'd love to invite you all to come and see some of the things we're doing. But until then, we can meet here and talk to wonderful experts like Carly Bergman. So Carly is amazing. Please check out her Instagram channel at, at sustainable duo, sustainable underscore duo. Um, amazing insight. She's been an inspiration to me and I am very excited and very honored to welcome you to speak to us today. Thank you for being here, Carly. Okay, well, hi everyone. I see some familiar faces. Um, so yeah, my name is Carly and I'm the co-founder of Sustainable Duo. I basically got into zero waste. It's actually a really interesting story and I'd love to talk about it, but um, I first want to start out just a little bit about me. I'm from Chicago and then I went to Florida Gulf Coast. If anyone's heard of the FGCU Food Forest or has had to visit the FGCU Food Forest, it's like one of the most amazing food forests I've ever seen. It's so magical. And so from there in college, I was really immersed in permaculture and coming from Chicago, where everyone just simply waters their lawn, you know, you just plant things, you spray glyphosate, Roundup, all of these, you know, pesticides, and everyone wants that perfect lawn, you know. It was really interesting to me to come to Florida 
and be immersed in the permaculture community and then see my friends in college have like food forests in their front and backyard, just harvesting all their own food. And I was already really into holistic living, like making my own DIYs and composting because I'm grateful my mom taught me how to compost and do a lot of earth friendly things. Um, we were like the only, I live in a cul-de-sac in Chicago where I grew up and we were one of the only lawns that didn't spray anything on our lawn just because my mom really showed me that appreciation for earth and growing our own food and like the harm of glyphosate and all of those things. And so, like I said, I went to FGC, got into permaculture, was blown away and just kind of saw how corrupt the whole system was. And I was majoring in environmental studies. And I also noticed how permaculture wasn't even part of the environmental studies major. So I was like, this is so interesting. It's this whole, like the, one of the most essential things we should know, but it's not even in the itinerary for the classes. So I really just dove in to permaculture and the whole food forest group. And then when I was a sophomore in college, there was this organization that came to FGCU and they told us about Give Volunteers. I don't know if anyone here has heard of Give Volunteers. They're a pretty well-known organization, but they go to places like Thailand and Nicaragua, South Africa, and they do a whole like nature immersion and sustainability courses. And they build permacultures in all these developing countries and show people how to do permaculture, how to live more sustainably, and et cetera. So I ended up going to Nicaragua and we were staying at a hostel where the rising sea levels were just completely deteriorating the entire hostel. So a lot of it was um, going to be underwater soon. So we were helping them create barriers and just do beach cleanups. We were on this island called Little Corn Island. And it was just really crazy because we saw like houses going underwater, things that you don't necessarily see in climate change. Um, for me, at least in Florida, you don't really see it. it you don't see really houses underwater or, you know, so um, it just blew my mind how I'm living in Florida in another country, continent, and basically all these things are happening and I'm not even aware. And you can hear it on the news, you can, see it in books, but when you finally see it and how it's affecting these people, it's just totally different. So that kind of lit a fire in me. And also when I was there, I got staph infection from swimming in their water because it's just so dirty. And I remember, I remember swimming on a beach, this beautiful beach, but there's microplastics everywhere and there's glass on the beaches. And it was just, I went up to one of the locals who was actually she had a pile of plastic and lit it on fire and was just burning it. And I was like blown away. I was like, Maria, what is going on? Like, what, do you guys not see a problem with this? Or is there any other way you can go about disposing trash and not just putting it in the ocean and lighting it on fire? And she was like, Carly, basically in a polite way, she was like, don't get it twisted. Like a lot of this is from tourists coming trashing the beaches, leaving everything there. And then they don't have a proper waste management system. So they really can't take care of it or they just don't have that in place. Or she said, it's not even from waste that they've created. It's waste that just washes up on their beaches from the gyres, you know, those cesspools of trash in the middle of the ocean or from other continents and countries just washes up. And just the way the wave currents work, it lands up on their beaches. So I was like, I couldn't help but think what were my decisions in the United States having, like what impact did it have on these people? So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go home after this trip in Nicaragua and collect my waste for the entire month just to get a viewpoint of how much waste I accumulate as an individual. Has anyone ever collected their waste by chance just to see how much waste they accumulate? Yeah, <laughs> you guys have. So um, in February, I, this is, was the fourth year I ran this global challenge called Futuristic February. Um, and we have thousands of, par of participants all over the world. And basically everyone collects their waste. For, and it, it's February because that's when I came home and I decided to collect my waste because I was in Nicaragua from December to January, came home and collected it during February. For the entire month of February, you collect your recyclables and your non-perishable waste. So if you're going to be composting things, you don't have to collect that. Um, if something's going to stink, you don't have to collect it. But basically, all of your plastic, all of your cans and everything, um, you collect all of that waste. So I'm going to show you guys the first picture I had. Um, if you can kind of see that. You can kind of see it. It actually, 
Um, it got cut off a little bit, but this was all of my waste from the first year I ran Futures to February. I had like 35 kombucha bottles because I love kombucha so much. I had a ton of plastic from tofu. I had vegan cookie dough. I had kale chip wrappers, granola bar wrappers, all, um, plant milk wrappers, just so much waste. And I was like, okay, here I am thinking I'm an environmentalist. I'm going to save the world, do all these things. But I was still using a lot of plastic. I was using plastic toothbrushes. I wasn't using like plastic bags or plastic water bottles. I had my reusables, but um, I was still buying a lot of food and packaging and those little plastic bags at the grocery store. I was still using those. And I just kind of was blown away and it really put me in my place. Like this is what Maria was talking about in Nicaragua. You know, she was talking about just the waste from all these other countries that just goes into their beaches. And even if you are disposing it properly, like recycling or throwing it away, the reality is when you throw your trash away, where is away? It goes into a landfill. So like we would hope it goes into a recycling facility. We hope, but the reality is that's just not really the case, unfortunately. So if you guys have not participated in Futuristic February, I really recommend, it doesn't have to be Futuristic February, you can even do it now, well maybe not now during quarantine, that would be kind of build up a lot in your house, but um, I really do recommend you collect your waste for a period of time to see how much you accumulate, and then when I looked at this pile, I was able to identify okay, maybe I can make my own nut milks and maybe I can make my own kombucha. So then when I did the challenge the next year, that was my waste. So it was significantly cut down and there were still a couple things that I could swap there. Um, can anyone raise their hand if they've like heard of the zero waste movement or just like the term zero waste? Just so I know if it's new or not. Right. So the t I feel like the term itself is kind of intimidating, like zero waste, like we're all just levitating poof, like not making any, you know, any waste at all. That's just not logical. It's not possible. We're all, we're all on this platform right now that's emitting some kind of waste through technology. You know, it's, it's impossible to be perfect. And I've a hundred percent tried to be perfect in the zero waste movement. And it just is stressful trying to be perfect in it. And it just doesn't work. Like I was one of the people that tried to fit all of their waste in a little mason jar for a year and I it, I would go by like months at a time weeks at a time without creating a single piece of plastic waste but I was it wasn't very logical and it was stressful and I was missing out on a lot of like my pleasures and my enjoyments so I just always tell people do the best you can with the knowledge that you know and you could just constantly plant seeds in people's minds and reduce your waste as much as possible but um, we live in a world where there's just going to be waste, but that's why it's important to have permacultures and like sustainable Kashi is doing such an amazing job at composting and showing people how to grow their own toilet paper plants. So everyone, you know, if you don't have a sustainable Kashi, you can go to use a bidet and like, I love my bidet. That was a swab we made probably what, maybe like five months ago and I feel like the whole bidet thing is sometimes taboo with people, like even composting toilets, people are like, ah, uh, or like the cloth. Someone mentioned that they do um, the cloth, toilet paper, toilet paper, and even that's sometimes taboo. But the reality is we're just going back to the basics here. We're like just trying to be as sustainable as possible. And we will do a lot of things to be as sustainable and ethical as we can do, like as we can be. And I love my bidet. It's great. It not only saves me a ton of resources. I don't have to buy my bamboo toilet paper anymore. Um, I actually still do buy it because we use our bamboo toilet paper to pick up our dog's poop <laughs> and, and we flush it down the toilet because that's actually the most sustainable way to discard of dog waste um, according to the EPA. So basically, um, but I don't, I just living my sustainable lifestyle, I'm sure a lot of you can resonate that a lot of your monthly costs are cut down like by switch, like how, um, I can't remember your name, sorry, um, Anson, how Anson, you were saying that when you switched to the bidet, like it not only is it more sustainable, but just a side effect of that is just saving so much money. And one of my favorite swaps is this safety. So I, you know, as I've gotten into the more holistic, sustainable movement, I've gotten such a different appreciation for my body hair. 
But, um, you know, for people that really do like to shave consistently, making a simple swap like the stainless steel razor, it's like 20 bucks. And there's a blade on here that you just replace. And by making this swap, for someone who shaves a lot in their life, you can save anywhere between $3,000 to $6,000 in your entire life just by making this simple, sustainable swap. And I know it looks kind of scary. Um, whenever I do demos with it or I bring it on stage with me when I do like talks on Zero Waste Living, everyone just always looks like ter they're terrified of this thing. And it's actually not too bad at all. Um, there are a lot of tutorials on YouTube. One of my friends has a really good tutorial. Her name's Eco Goddess, and she does a whole video of how to use these and it's really great it's actually super easy so this is one of my favorite swaps i have like a whole tray right here of like swaps that i'm going to show you all um, but if you have any questions um how do you do that terry do they just kind of type it in or uh, yeah the best way would be to type in the quest uh, in the comments okay perfect so if anyone has any questions um at any time just let me know so um, back to futuristic February when I was able to identify my waste and like look at it because we're so used to getting waste throwing it away getting it throwing it away using plastic throwing it away we never really get that visual of like being able to look at it and being like okay like maybe I can do this maybe I can make this swap you know so having that pile was super helpful for me and I realized that um, with these plastic bags that I was using for organic spinach and organic kale at the grocery store like um, because I was in college, I wasn't really growing anything my own besides the FGC food forest. I was able to harvest a lot of like katuk there and greens, but for things like spinach and stuff, we didn't have much during some seasons. So I was like, okay, when I go to the grocery store, I can bring bags like this. Um, they come actually way bigger than this. This is kind of a small one. Oh, here's a bigger one. So I was like, okay, I can put my greens in little cotton bags and I could put my kale in cotton bags and that'll reduce a lot of the single plastic use waste. And I was a big fan of the bulk section already, but I was still using plastic bags. So I was like, okay, I can fill these. Um, I would go to the bulk section, like at a local health food store or Whole Foods and like fill this up with quinoa and then bring it home and then put it in a repurposed mason jar and then put it in my cabinet. And that way I'm not buying quinoa and packaging. So that was like a really great way to reduce waste there. And I totally, recommend getting some of these organic cotton bags. There's a bunch of, I'm sure um, you all know if, if Kathy has been on here, Kathy Shepherdson, she owns a zero waste store in Florida. So that's always fun if you want a road trip there, because if you go in that store, you will be just mind blown of all the sustainable swaps that you didn't even know were possible. And so for that, I really recommend like going into your when you like just looking into cabinets like your food cabinet or your bathroom and kind of doing a self audit and being like okay what swaps can i make here and so a really cool thing i want to talk about is just hair care like sustainable um cruelty free health care it's health care <laughs> hair care <laughs> yeah health care um okay so hair care i used to use shampoo bars and they're great. I love them. They worked so well for me. Um, and that was a great way to get off plastic and shampoo and conditioner bottles. So they just kind of look like soap bars, but they're for your hair. Has anyone heard of like shampoo or conditioner bars? They are super great. Yeah. And so a couple in July, I actually had really long hair, like kind of like down to my ribs. And I shaved it all off completely. Like it was all gone. And now my hair is like growing out um, super fast. But I was like, I heard about this method called the no shampoo method. Has anyone heard of that? <laughs> it's really, does anyone do the no shampoo method on here? Oh, oh yeah, you do. Oh my gosh, Leslie, nice. So we have short hair. So it's like really easy for us right now. Yeah, exactly. All that volume. So my hair is actually wet right now, so um, you can't really see, but basically I don't use, for the past, how long it's been? Nine months since I shaved my head, I haven't used a single drop of shampoo or conditioner. And there's this whole method that, um, again, called the no, they actually called the no poo method. If you hashtag no poo method on Instagram, you'll see a ton of people's hair. And you basically don't use any product in your hair. And the point is you use your hair's own natural oils and you brush it out. 
to the bottom of your ends. And it just kind of goes back to, um, you know, there's so many shampoo products and hair growth products and all these things on the market that are packaged in plastic that contain chemicals. Like they're not ethically sourced. Like they have all this like shit in there and it's not necessary and it creates your hair like to keep wanting it and wanting more and wanting more and it kind of just feeds into consumerism and you'll find that to be very prevalent in a lot of the industries like the shaving industry like you know they don't necessarily want you to be comfortable with your body hair and they want you to keep buying plastic razors and keep buying them and buying them and then throwing them in the landfill and then getting more like all these single use things so those are just like a couple of great ways like just to not um just to not go into consumerism and just try to come back to the basics again and be like, okay, like, is there more of a natural way to wash my hair? That's like good for my hair. It's good for the planet. And it's kind of going back to our basics way of living. So that's why I love the shampoo method. So for people that have long hair, there is like a transition phase, but I totally recommend looking into the no shampoo groups on Facebook. They've been really helpful for me. And yeah, it just, it feels so good not depending on products like that anymore. So it is like a really freak feeling. You don't have to shave your head like I do. You don't have to shave all your hair, but I, it was great to like start off fresh and then just kind of see how my hair is without any dyes or harmful ingredients or products. So that was a really cool experience. I highly recommend. Um, let's see, Terry, is it okay? I have like a couple, like, um, I kind of like a sustainability, like it's like on a tray here right now, but there's just a couple products that I use really quick to like just reduce my waist like immensely. Of course, please, please share. Perfect. Okay. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen these. Could someone, if you know what it is, can you type it in? Yeah. <laughs> Got someone, a couple of people excited. <laughs> these are great. Yes. Wraps. So this one's actually made of um, coniferous resin, but they do make these out of beeswax too. So what you do with these, like if I didn't have a lid for, this is bulk quinoa, I would just place this on top and wrap it around. And basically it becomes its own lid. And these are great. So you don't have to use, um, like tin foils or plastic wraps. Um, I can't think of the word right now that like thin plastic, was that just saran wrap? It's been, <laughs> I haven't used saran wrap in a while. I like forget. Um, but yeah, plastic baggies, Ziploc. So you don't have to use that. So these are great. Um, there, I, there's a couple of really good brands. This one is made of coniferous resin. So it's by a company called Earthology, but there's a lot of really good local Florida brands. Um, I would recommend looking into that they're super great. Um, so this is kind of something important that I want to talk about. So seeds, right? This is like perfect for everyone in the permaculture community. When I first went to Zero Waste Living, I was like, okay, great. Like, I want to grow my own food. So I was getting all of these organic seeds from like really cool companies online. But then I kind of came to the realization like, which I can just do trades. And I'm sure a lot of you do trades and you do seed trades and plant cutting trades. And that just kind of makes the most sense because, I mean, it's the same thing with kombucha. If any of you are familiar with the scobies on top, like, there's no really need to buy a kombucha starter kit because um, the SCOBY is the bacteria that ferments it for anyone that doesn't know. But basically these things just duplicate and duplicate and duplicate and people have so much of them, they don't know what to do with it. Same thing with seeds. So that's why I always recommend like going in a Facebook group with like locals and just hosting a, a swap, a seed swap meetup. And obviously we can't do that now, but you know, there's clothing swaps coming up all over the place where people are getting together and bringing their old clothes and doing swaps with people. They're doing the same thing with seeds. That was a big thing at FGCU Food Forest. A lot of people would bring seeds and they do swaps. So it's community building. It's free. People already have an abundance of seeds and maybe they want someone else's. So it's just a great trade. And that was something I loved that we did at the Permaculture Convergence at Sustainable Kashi. Um, David, I believe his name was, he hosted this big trading blanket and it was amazing. Oh, I have my earrings over there. Actually. Um, I, I traded someone, um, bam, these bamboo utensils, um, for our company, sustainable duo, we make these bamboo utensils and we provide these for people. Um, but I trade, I traded someone bamboo utensils for a pair of like earrings that he made from dumpster wood <laughs> and they're amazing and I love them so much and it just felt so good that I was trading him 
something he could use, you know, bamboo utensils. He can bring these with him on the go when he's traveling and reduce waste that way. So he doesn't have to use plastic cutlery. And then I was able to get some really cool earrings out of the deal. So it was amazing. There were some really cool trades that day. I remember um, someone who was Andy offered to trade his land for something. And someone people were offering him like an RV, a camper, like it just got super big. <laughs> it was really cool. But yeah, the trades are endless. And there's actually, um, if you go to the South Florida Edible Facebook group, I, I think it's South Florida um, Edible Landscaping group is the group name. It will come up if you just look up South Florida Gardening. Um, but there, there's a platform that all these people use to do local trades. And it's just really great to be able to meet up with like-minded people and just the trades and have current, like basically money-free transactions. It, it's really cool because we all have objects, material items that maybe aren't serving us anymore. So to be able to, to give that to someone who's going to appreciate it and then get something that you will actually use in return is a really good feeling. And that also brings me to decluttering. Like a big part of my zero waste journey is minimalism. Has anyone seen the documentary Minimalism on Netflix? Yeah. Oh, if you have not, please write that down and please watch that documentary. It will change your life. It based, When I watched that documentary while going zero waste, it just really inspired me to not only decrease my waste with like plastic use and food, but just like in general, my other ways, like things like just... I noticed that I had all these belongings that didn't resonate with me. And I mean, they maybe once did, you know, maybe it was like a memorabilia I had for my grandma or, you know, things that I was just collecting, but it just became all of this clutter. And I actually, so you, maybe some of you can resonate with this because of Florida problems. Um, but we, my boyfriend and I, we lived in this, we were renting this house and we were gone doing a zero waste talk in Portland one time and we came home and we noticed like all of this like white fuzzy cotton looking stuff on the walls on the table on our clothes um and it smelled so bad I was like what happening and we had black mold <laughs> and it was awful but the so all of our stuff was ruined like we lost about and I don't even know why we didn't do renter's insurance that was like one of the most silly things ever but we lost around like 25 grand of stuff, just stuff, right? And um, honestly, it, this was right at the beginning of my zero waste journey, right after watching the movie Minimal Minimalism. And everyone's like, I'm so sorry this is happening to you. And I'm just like smiling. I'm like, you guys don't understand how happy I am. I'm like this because I have no choice. I have to get rid of all of this stuff. Unfortunately, I had to go to the landfill because it was contaminated and the black mold spores, you just don't want to mess with that and like donate it because it can cause a lot of health problems. Um, but it really helps me that, that alone, that whole situation made me go extremely minimal because I had nothing to keep anymore. Like I literally had my car and I filled my car of like a couple of the things that I could keep. Um, but the rest I had to get rid of. So that just propelled me. And I just noticed so many things about my life felt so much better. Like I felt more free. I felt more flowy. I just felt like a lot of my mental clutter, like I had to clean less. So there was less to do. There was less stress. Like it just, I, I always tell people like, this is one of my favorite lines. Like nothing looks as good is how, is what being minimal feels. Like something can look great and you could have a bunch of items, but at the end of the day, like being minimal to me at least just feels so powerful and I feel so free. Um, and I just totally recommend, I, and you kind of, you know, there's so t those TV shows like Hoarders and I'm um, just showing, you know, all the chaos that a lot of materialism and consumerism can build up and how much stress it can create. So you'll just notice as you decl declutter your life, how many things start to seem less stressful and how much peace it can bring you. Um, and then you just really cherish those material items that truly do mean a lot to you. So I really recommend and rant, um, but just look into the documentary Minimalism. I'm like just awkwardly laughing to myself thinking about it because it's literally just so good. Like you guys will love it. I'm excited. If you watch it, message me on Sustainable Do. I'd love to hear what you think about it, but it really is a good time to declutter right now throughout this quarantine and kind of just do those audits in your own house. 
Um, let's see, what else do I have? So let's see, do we have any questions? A couple of times, trade blankets are cool. Yeah, oh, people are making kefir, nice. Oh, my curiosity goes to your earrings. How did you make them? Okay, so I wore these on purpose. Um, I'm really big into sustainable fashion. So this was thrifted. I'm wearing these leggings that were gifted. Um, I actually was taking my dog to the dog park and this woman was like, do you look like do you do yoga? I have a ton of old yoga clothes if you want them. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so um, it was really cool for that to happen. But um, these earrings, so my friends have this company. It's a zero waste earring company called Slices of Citrus. And they make these out of real fruit. So I have a couple over there too. They make them out of, they have strawberries. Um, I think that they have like, what do they have? They have a couple of zucchini ones, like just watermelon, like so funny. But just taking nature and like forming it into like jewelry pieces, that is one of my favorite things to do. Like I have friends that make jewelry out of coffee beans and seeds. And a lot of my friends have zero waste jewelry companies where they just go thrifting and get all these pieces and put it together. And like, to me, those are so special and they mean so much to me and they're not creating any waste in the process. So it's super cool. I'm all for like DIY hacks and like making your own things. So there are tutorials on YouTube. If anyone wants to make these um, yourself, you can actually dry them in the sun and um, just make a ton of different cool creations with different foods. And one of my YouTube videos on uh, our Sustainable Duo YouTube channel is making candles out of oranges. And it, it's so easy. And all you have to do, I'll let you look at the, um, the tutorial. It's super simple. But I think it's such a cool thing to do, especially now during these times, um, just because people, you know, you're trying to conserve electricity, especially on Earth Day. It'd be cool to have orange candles all over and not use any lighting. Uh, but basically you just cut the orange in half and then you fill the inside with coconut oil and then you could light it and it stays lit for like mine typically do for like two to three hours. And it's really cool, you know, just to keep that in the back of your mind if you ever like need a form of light. Uh, it's kind of cool, but it, it smells really good too. But again, like not having to buy a new candle, like just going back to nature, like what hacks can we make from nature and fruit and produce and all of these things so we don't have to go and be a consumer and buy those things. And if you do want to buy things, you know, you can always check out the secondhand apps like OfferUp and Poshmark is a great one for clothing. Facebook Marketplace is one of my favorite. That's how we decorated our entire apartment for under $600. Like we got everything in our apartment and we have a YouTube video doing a tutorial of our whole apartment. It looks kind of like blank, like behind me though, but it does I actually plants all over the place, except like this one area. This is just where the lighting is the best. Um, but there's this whole video we made of like how we got an organic mattress, which is super important to have organic, an organic mattress. Um, there's another documentary on that, but, um, but we got it for, $400, I think, or $300 maybe, because we got like the store model that was on display rather than brand new. It's just, there's so many win-wins of like trying to be a sustainable shopper because you do end up getting all of the deals and um, you're able to not contribute to any new waste, which is really cool. Um, I just realized it's 9.43 already and I still have so much to talk about, but how much time do I have left? Um, we, you can do five, 10 more minutes. Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, okay. Perfect. Oh, okay. This is one of my favorite things. Um, this is just a coconut bowl and there's so many things that I do with this coconut bowl. Like I have it right here. I have another one right here that like holds a lot of my earrings. Um, I have another one, <laughs> another one right here that I, um, I had a bamboo in here, but it got too big. So I transplanted it, but I used this to grow like windowsill herbs. And I love these because these are made from hurricane debris. So I, I use coconut bowls for so many different things. And for anyone that lives in Florida or, you know, by a beach that has sand, a really cool thing to do is fill this with sand. And then it could be an incense holder. Cause you know, when you light incense and then it gets all over the place, like I just put incense in here and it's really cool. But so these coconut bowls, like I said, they're from earth. Um, they are made of hurricane debris. We used to sell these on our sustainable duo shop, but we don't anymore, we ran out. But 
basically, um, there's coconut bowls all over the place you can find. But I always bring these with me when we travel. Brendan and I, um, the other half of the sustainable duo, we eat, go travel all over the place. And so basically, whenever we go to smoothie bars and, um, you know, maybe even Whole Foods, somewhere like that, when I get a smoothie or a acai bowl, I ask them to put it in my coconut bowl and they give it back to me. And that way, I'm, and then I have my bamboo utensils with me, so I don't have to use any of their plastic waste or plastic utensils. Except I'm not too sure how that's going to be after quarantine, to be honest, after this whole thing going on. I know that a lot of places are cracking down on reusables, unfortunately, so I'm not really sure how that's going to be. But you just got to do the absolute best you can. And one of the things I want to talk about is Brendan and I. Again, I want to go back to there's no perfect zero waste. Like every day we're learning something, we're trying. And so we have a company called Planet Protein and it's a plant-based nutrition company. And we just noticed that there was in the market of like sustainable nutrition, like in vegan nutrition, we eat a plant-based diet. So um, that's just what, there's no judgment at all. That's just what our bodies feel best doing. Um, and being vegan by no means is the most sustainable diet, which is something that I've learned a lot over these past couple of years, especially at sustainable Kashi, like learning Rob Greenfield talk. Like it was really inspiring to like realize that there's so many different diets out there and there's not a one size fits all with health or sustainability. Um, but basically, so we have a plant-based nutrition company and we noticed all the plastic that the, um, that the protein industry uses. So we have a wooden scoop in here to replace the plastic. And then we have a zero waste program with these bags. So my boyfriend is from Flint, Michigan. And I don't know if any of you know of the Flint water crisis, but it's like a really, really huge issue where these people are drinking toxic water. So, um, and that's where he grew up. So he takes these bags back and then we work with TerraCycle who forms them into desks and chairs for low income communities and schools in Flint. So that's really cool to be able to repurpose like waste and turn it into something really cool like those desks. So they don't have to produce new desks and new chairs. So it's kind of, you know, it's just kind of like recycling or repurposing a bit. Um, we did look into compostable packaging, but the problem is that a lot of these, um, these companies that use compostable packaging for their food, a lot of it is sprayed with pesticides and acids, which is something I actually just learned recently. So it's hard. Again, we were like, do we do compostable packaging because that's better for the you know backyard? People can just throw it outside, it'll decompose. Or are we gonna use, 80, this is 80% less packaging than other protein brands, but it's still plastic. So, you know, am I a hypocrite for creating a company with plastic? Like maybe to a certain degree, yes, but we're just trying to do the best we can with the resources we have and without like sacrificing our beliefs. Um, but again, it just kind of comes back to there's no perfect and you just have to do the best you can. And that's why we created the zero waste program. And when there's, we're actually working with um, a company that does algae packaging right now. So we should have that launching in the next um, year or two. So that's exciting. But that's the cool thing. Like there's all of these different, if you're going to get one thing from this talk too, I just think that just be inspired to like create because there's so many different new there's so many new sustainable movements happening. Like you see the guy, I, there's a video on Facebook of like this kid that created a mushroom that eats plastic in the ocean or these girls that created this device to get rid of like the fishing line waste. Like there's so many different ways to reduce waste. And now we're working with someone who's going to create algae based packaging. Like there's so much room for sustainable entrepreneurship. So if you have a sustainable idea, like go for it. And that's how we created our own company. And we're trying to, to raise awareness of sustainable nutrition and like working with permacultures and you know composting all these things so definitely there's a lot to be done with consumerism in the modern day um, but it really it's just trying to be the most ethical human being you can be um, without just stressing yourself completely out because we were born into this world but it is kind of up to us to try to make it more sustainable and ethical and just again, go back to the basics. That's like my favorite line. <laughs> Thank you, Carly. Oh my goodness. 
You are a personal inspiration to me, your journey into living uh, lightly on this earth and but still understanding our impact is just really, you've really been uh, inspiration. So thank you for sharing everything. Can you share with everybody how to find you and uh, how, where, where you're at? Yes, perfect. Um, thank you for sharing the minimalism link, by the way. <laughs> so the best way to find me is on Instagram. It's Carly, C-A-R-L-Y underscore Bergman, B-E-R-G-M-A-N. And then we also have um, our company Sustainable Duo and Planet Protein. Um, you'll be able to find those all through our links. And then we're also on YouTube, Sustainable Duo, our website, Sustainable Duo. Uh, but definitely, we do a lot of, I have so many zero waste tips that I've posted over the years on my Instagram, whether it be like sustainable periods or even like sustainable sex, sustainable shopping, sustainable hygiene, like food, how to get free organic food, like so many different videos. So um, a lot of those are on our YouTube Duo and then my Instagram. Thank you so much. It's, it's so nice having you here. It's a great pleasure to be able to share this with this community and thank everybody for being on this call. Um, it's, it's needed. And now I, I love seeing all these DIY projects. So everyone has a lot of time right now sitting at home. So it, it gives us the perfect uh, reason just dig in and make our own deodorants make our own shampoos make our own beeswax wraps it's yeah. it's fun and it's something to do it'll keep keep our minds going which is just fantastic right. um, next next week we're going to be talking with joe pierce for people that know micanopy joe pierce he's going to be talking about biochars and all sorts of ways of building up our soils so you definitely don't want to miss that um, I want to give a huge shout out to Amy Zelt. Thank you. She is our production manager. She's the one operating all these microphones and making all this stuff work for us. So thank you very much for making that happen. If you like what we're doing, please uh, donate to us. There's a link here in the comments. Uh, makes everything go, pays the internet bills, all that things. Um, uh, together, we're stronger and this is an opportunity for us to come together. Uh, we, we're having a giveaway this week. Uh, the wonderful Kathy uh, Parson, who, uh, uh, who you just mentioned earlier with the Shop Conscious Space um, is donated a zero waste kit. So somebody will be getting a zero waste kit. And uh, what we do there is just uh, go on to the uh, Facebook community site um, and answer the questions of what are the next steps you're going to do to live a more waste-free life in your home. And we'll pick one of those answers tomorrow and send you a free zero waste kit. Uh, maybe it'll be all the way over to Belgium. So that's really exciting. <laughs> um, so again, I wanna thank everybody for coming here. This is really exciting. It gives us an opportunity to talk to each other and connect to each other. We're, we're living in an extremely disconnected world. And it's not just uh, our disconnection to each other socially right now, but this has been going on for a long time. We've been disconnected with the earth. We've been disconnected with our waste streams, with our lifestyles. And we really are coming to a point where we realize all those conveniences in our lives have a cost. And we're at a point now where we can turn that around. And I think that as we take a reflection onto our relationship with the earth, we're creating a healthy path forward. And so this is an exciting opportunity for us. And I, I really believe that it's not so much about decreasing our footprint and making ourselves so unstable because we're not making any waste. As Carly was saying, we need things, but really just increasing the size of our handprints and really making a difference in the communities around you and what we share with each other and how we make each other feel. Thank you everyone for being on this call. Please join us on the Sustainable Kashi community. Uh, answer the question and uh, we hope to see you next week. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs>